students from this lecture we will start a new topic that is signals and systems the gate weightage for this topic is nearly 4 to 6 marks so first let us see the topics that we are going to cover under this chapter first we will look into basics of signals and systems where we will cover the properties of signals and properties of systems after this if a signal is continuous and periodic we will look into continuous time Fourier series if a signal is continuous and aperiodic we will look into continuous time Fourier transform and Laplace transform if a signal is discrete and periodic we will look into discrete time Fourier series if a signal is discrete and aperiodic we will look into discrete time Fourier transform and jet transform after this at the end we will study DFT IDFT and FFT and the process of conversion from continuous to discrete is called as sampling we will also study about this but for electrical students especially for gate exam you don't have all this the syllabus is limited it includes CTFS CTFT and Laplace transform and jet transform apart from this we will have a small topic called as sampling that's it one two three four you will have only five topics and this basics is common for both so what we will do is first we will cover these topics afterwards we will proceed to the remaining topics let us start with basics so first what is a signal I can tell that signal is nothing but a function that contains some information like if there is a voltage signal that is 230 sin omega t basically this is a sine function but it contains the information of voltage that's why this is called as voltage signal voltage signal a function containing some information is called a signal at the end next a function without any information but simply used for mathematical purpose to analyze mathematically without any information is not a signal now here I can make two statements first one is all signals are functions right because any function with some information is a signal and all signals are functions but all functions or not signals is this clear because any function without information is not a signal next a signal can be a function of one variable or two variables three variables or so on if it is a function of one variable then signal is called as one dimensional signal if it is a function of two variables then this is called as two dimensional signal similarly for three variables this is called as 3d signal And if a signal is function of more than one variable, this is called as multidimensional signal. Multi-dimensional signal. First, 
the example for one day signal is voltage and speed signal where it varies only with respect to time the example for 2d signal is image signal see image is divided into small parts called as pixels to know the information of each pixel you need two dimensions that's why image is a 2d signal an example for 3d signal is video signal where video is nothing but moving images right moving images for image you require two dimensions and since they are moving you also require a third dimension that is time so totally video is a three dimensional signal now let us discuss about systems i can tell that systems are components that are used to process signals for example there is a system what it will do is it will take a signal as input and produces desired signal as output desired signal as output so let us understand this for example i need a 10 volt output dc but i had 15 volt input i need to convert 15 volt to 10 volt so i will use a buck converter here what it will do is it will take 15 volt signal as input and it will convert to 10 volt output so here buck converter acts as a system and more about systems we will discuss in upcoming lectures for now let us concentrate on signals and in that signals we will concentrate only on the signals that are dependent on time and frequency that are one dimensional signals next let us understand what are the basic types of signals present as all of you know there will be three types continuous discrete and digital a signal is said to be continuous if both amplitude and time are continuous a signal is said to be discrete if amplitude is continuous but time is discrete in nature and a signal is said to be digital if both amplitude and time are discrete is this okay next the process of conversion from continuous to discrete is called as sampling and from discrete to digital is called as quantization so let us understand one by one in detail first continuous signal a signal should be continuous in both time and amplitude this is called as continuous signal but the problem with this kind of signals is if i need to store data suppose let it be 1 and 2 i need to store the data between 1 and 2 it will have infinite number of points like i need to store 1.11 1.121 1.33 like this there will be infinite number of points so i can tell that i need infinite memory but my memory is limited so storage of continuous signal is not possible that's why what i will do is i will divide the same signal into small points with equal intervals 
like i will take a sample here 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 like this i will divide into small intervals these kind of signals are called as discrete signals so my signal will be like this where we divide into small samples and that too with equal intervals now i need to store only this number of data points it is sufficient so let it be 0 ts 2 ts 3 ts as this point be 4 ts here ts is called as sampling interval sampling interval why because the interval between two points is ts see the spacing between these two samples is ts the spacing between these two samples is ts and the spacing between these two samples is also ts so ts is called as sampling interval where 1 by ts which is fs is called as sampling frequency sampling frequency so what will happen is to convert from continuous to digital we need to replace t by nts so if there is a signal x of t where n is an integer let me write here x of t the value of n and the value of t if n is 0 t will be 0 that means this sample if n is 1 t will be ts that means this sample if n is 2 t will be 2ts that means this sample similarly if the signal exists for negative side also i can write n as minus 1 which i will get minus ts minus 2 for minus 2ts like this indirectly what we are doing is we are converting t to nts t to nts so x of t converted to x of nts and i can also write this as x of n where n of 1 indicates 1 ts n of 2 indicates 2 ts like that and this process is called as sampling is this okay next i can tell that here time became discrete where only the points minus 2 ts minus ts 0 ts 2 ts and so on infinite limited set of samples are possible that's why time became discrete but if you see amplitude For this sample, my amplitude can be anything that is 1.3246. It is not like time. So my amplitude is still continuous. If my amplitude is also limited, like it should only attain the value either 1, 2, 3, 4, like this, then I can tell that amplitude became discrete, but it is still continuous because it can take any value between 1 and 2. Now, here the concept came that is digital signals. Here what we will do is, we will also limit the amplitude, that is, we will create certain levels here. So whatever be the value between 1 and 2, it is restricted to 1, like if the value is 1.2123, this value attains the value 1. If the value is between 2 and 3, let it be 2.212. It will attain the value either 2 or 3. Now I can tell that my amplitude is also discrete. Why? Because it can only attain value 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. That's why amplitude is discrete. And time is also discrete. the process of creating levels and limiting the 
values to that levels is called as quantization quantization but in this chapter we will not worry about digital signals we will limit our discussion up to discrete signals is this okay more about digital signals we will study in digital electronics so what we studied till now we studied how to convert from continuous to discrete domain where we should replace t by nts and the process is called as sampling discrete signal is denoted by xn continuous signal is denoted by x of t after this to convert from discrete to digital we followed a process called as quantization where we will create certain levels on y axis and we will limit the values to that levels let us solve a problem a continuous time signal x of t equal to phi sin 100 pi t is sampled with sampling frequency of 1 kilohertz find discrete signal so to convert from continuous to discrete we need to replace t with nts here sampling frequency is given that is 1 kilohertz so my sampling interval will be 1 by fs that is 1 by 1 kilo therefore i can write this as phi sin 100 pi into nts where it is phi sin 100 pi i am substituting the value of ts this will become 1 by 10 cube so from this my xn will be phi sin pi n by 10 so this is the process to convert from continuous to discrete in the next lecture we will study some of the basic signals present.